are live perfect uh welcome to another pre-pt chat live uh where uh myself uh joseph uh, one of the co-founders of pre-pt ground and casey coleman who is the other co-founder come into this group live and talk to you uh about a lot of different things a lot of different things that are you know important to know as a pre-pt but just tools tools to utilize as a pre-pt on your journey as you work towards getting into physical therapy school and, and tonight's live stream is going to be a little different uh from the ones that we've done throughout this year sydney how are you doing um and and, and tonight's live stream is going to be really um focused on on reflecting on this past year uh, a lot of things that we've uh you know mistakes that we've made uh good bad david how you doing shanahan karen how you doing uh but, but just you know taking those points and just learning and growing and re re really utilizing them to help you as you go into 2019. I see Casey's about to hop on. Let's add. Let's talking about, uh, you know, what the five key things we learned uh, from pre-PTs this year, from ourselves this year. What's up, Casey? How you doing, brother? Well, so I, before we start, I got a question for uh, Shanahan. How do you get on here so fast? Because every time knows, I hop bro. on, I just see... <laughs> I see the icon. I see that you're watching. Yo. Like, how is how is he on here so fast, so quick? Yo. I don't know how you do it. You got to tell me your secrets, because my man Shanahan, like yo, he's he he's got a new baby. My man has his phone like glued to his hip. He's raised like yo, oh no, like he just knows it's about to happen. He's ready all the time. Just but knows. Man, right. yo, it scares the I mean, <laughs> Do what you do, Shanahan. But but we appreciate it, bro. We really do. Um, thank you for the support, man. Uh, but but, oh, but let tonight, me get this Casey, towel off my. Let me get this towel off my wall. It's the perfect. <laughs> it's, it's the perfect background, brother. It's the perfect background. But but Muhammad, how you doing? Casey, hi. Uh, I mean, Cody, how you doing? Uh, Shanahan says, when you're in beast mode, twenty four seven grind doesn't stop. That's exactly why he does it. Hey, that's how it <laughs> works. And so we respect it tonight. We want to talk about some of the key things we learned this year from pre PTs. Uh, the key things we learned from uh, students that were in our immediate circle, our inner circle in the accepted system, uh, things we learned from ourselves as, as, as coaches, as mentors for you as pre-physical therapy students. That's what, that's what we've signed up for. That's what we've signed up for. And it's been an amazing journey for the two of us. It's been an amazing, I mean, Casey, this time last year, we wouldn't have even dreamed to be in the position that that we're in right now just to continue serving and helping and, and doing what we're doing at this level and so and so going into 2019 is going to be no different going into 2019 we're going in like if we came in 100 miles an hour this year we're coming in a thousand miles an hour in 2019 we're going all out uh to really make sure that you guys have everything you need as pre-pt that's why we're here uh so feel free to utilize us to our max uh, but tonight, Casey, we're talking about the five lessons for 2019. The five lessons for 2019 that will be the difference between a successful or wasted year as a pre-PT. And if you're watching this live stream at any point, whether you're watching live or on replay, at some point during this, during this live stream, when you finally accept that 2019 is yours, I want you to comment below 2019 is mine. I just want you to claim it for yourself. You, you don't got to claim it for me. You don't got to claim it for Casey. We, we honestly, like, we have our own things to claim. But for you personally, I want you to just accept that 2019 is yours. Say 2019 is mine. Just comment that below. Um, I'll keep saying that a few times during this live stream because I want you to go into this next year understanding that you have absolute control. Casey also wants you to go into this next year understanding that really, like, everything that you want. And I hope you saw that in the live stream we did last night. Let's go, Mohammed. Like, like, I hope you saw it in the live stream that we did last night with Ben. Ben Kim coming in with a 2.4 GPA, which is usually a pretty big excuse for most pre-PTs. It's a very big um, crippling point for most pre-PTs who say, you know what, Casey, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. But the honest truth is Ben came into 2018 saying that 2018 was his. So if you're going to go into 2019 with half the effort that Ben did, it's game over. So if you feel that, if you understand that, if you know that you're ready to do it, it's going to be work, of course. It's going to be a grind. That's why we call it pre-PT grind. But, 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 but honestly, if, if you want to go into this next year knowing, okay, I know 
what I need to do. I, I, after tonight's live stream, I understand the steps that I need to take. So because of that, 2018, sorry, 2019, I'm sorry, I'm still in this year. Like 2019 is mine. Casey, before we go all in, man, is there anything that you, uh, you have on your mind, bro? Like after this last year? Or are you ready to just dive in? Man, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it short, but you were, you were kind of alluding to it before. This time, this time last year, this was not even, I don't even know what we were thinking or what we were thinking was in the future, but this was never in the realm of what we thought. The group being as big, the podcast, all the channels, our intern team, uh, where we thought we would have been. Uh, so it's just kind of, it's kind of amazing to just see that this was just something in our minds to now at the end of 2018, this being, you know, with Shanahan and Karen and Kaylee and Muhammad and Elise and Kavante being on here that we didn't even know existed a year ago is, mm -hmm. is just pretty amazing. So I'm just excited to see what will happen in 2019 and what new faces and what new people will be able to, to impact. So that's pretty much it. Keep building. Keep building. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So, Casey, we have five points tonight. I'm just going to kind of read them off as, as we go through them, and then you and I are just going to go all in on it. Tonight, pre-PTs, if you have any questions on any of these five, we want you to ask. That's why it's a live stream. That's why this is not a pre-recorded video that we're sharing with you. This is a live stream, so we want you to ask. Like, let's, let, let's talk tonight, because we only got a few days left for this year. So let's make sure that the last bit of 2018, we're doing everything we can to prep for 2019 and absolutely crushing it. So, Casey... The first thing, the first key lesson for 2019 that I have learned in 2018 that a few of our, you know, pre-PTs in our circle in the accepted system and really a lot of other pre-PTs outside of that is understanding one thing. The very first thing is there's no excuses and we should stop creating them. There are no excuses and we should stop creating them. And, and, and I'll preface this by saying this, Joey, what's up? Winner, how you doing, bro? Like, and, and so... I'll preface it by saying this. This time last year, I used to say that. I used to say no excuses, no this. But I'm not going to lie to you. Like There were times this year where I didn't really understand the extent of that. There were still certain things in my... And I'm not talking as a pre-PT because I, I knew as a pre-PT, you got to just lock in. But, but, but I'm talking about like my own personal career. There were certain things that I had to battle this year as a physical therapist that are similar to what you're battling as a pre-PT. Things that, based on how I was taught, or let me not even blame my teachers, based on how I had accepted it, I thought that certain things I could blame on my professors. You know what? I'm like this because my, my professors didn't teach me correctly. I'm like this because my family situation was, 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 was kind of tough. Like, I, I grew up in a... Like, I mean, I'm an immigrant, of course, coming in, I didn't have a lot of the same privileges and advantages that a lot of other students have, and some didn't have as many as I did. But, but I, I used to use a lot of those as excuses. So when I didn't accomplish something, oh, pre-PT terms, when I didn't get accepted into PT school, or when I didn't pass classes for a semester, or when I didn't, you know, do well on my GRE, or if I didn't kill it on my interview, there, there was always somebody else to blame. Or there was always something else to blame. There was always an excuse. But if there's one thing that we're learning real quick, is that excuses don't exist. Sam, how you doing, brother? And Joey, you're right. No excuses. Excuses don't exist. They don't. We can point the finger all day as pre-PTs. We can, like, I could have had my, my hardest semester. I could go back and say, yo, my, my teacher didn't teach me nothing. You know what I'm saying? Or I could use it as a reason to grind even harder. I can use it as a reason to find other solutions because some, some teachers in PT school are not the greatest either. Casey and I could tell you that hands down. Casey, you remember, bro, even in PT school, we didn't, we didn't always have the best teachers. So that could have been our excuse. You know what, Casey? I couldn't pass PT school because teachers just didn't teach me well, man. Like, they didn't. Mm. Hmm. Mm. I invested all that money. I got into PT school, but I couldn't even pass PT school, man, because, because the, the teachers were rough. Mm. Teachers didn't care about me. You know, Casey, you remember that one semester, that one spring semester where we had like 
10 or 11 different professors, each of them thinking that like each class they had was like a six credit class, but it was all really mm-hmm. worth like one credit. Mm-hmm. You couldn't even Don't sleep get me... more than, you could even sleep more than five. I know you know the semester I'm talking about, bro. Like yeah, you could yeah. even sleep more than five hours, bro, because you just didn't have enough time during your day. And all we could, I mean, I could have stayed that semester straight up saying, yo, this program is set up for me to fail. And, and I mean, shoot, there's moments where I felt that. Don't get me started on clinicals. You can go on a, on a whole live mm. stream about that. Mm. Mm. But excuses don't exist. And if you go into 2019, still holding on to certain excuses, and I'm talking as subtle as, oh, my, like, my finances right now aren't lined up, or there are certain things in my family that I can't really straighten out. So because of that, I can't do this. Because of that, I can't apply here. Because of that, I can't retake classes. Because of that, I can't really take the GRE. I actually don't have a lot of time. You know what, Joseph? This is my last, like, there's certain classes because I've been seven years out. There's certain classes that if I, if I go an extra year, I won't be able to, even though that will actually give me a shot getting into PT school. I don't want to have to retake classes that I took seven years ago. So because that, I'm just going to apply to schools that aren't really a match for me. But, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's not my fault. It's the circumstances. There's no excuses. And you know what it took for me, Casey? For, for me, it took those students in the acceptance system. Mm. It, took, it took Ben. Ben, last night's live stream, to show me what climbing out from a low GPA really looks like. Mm. It's a Donette to show me how to do that with a low GPA, with a family, side hustle, all these different things, a lot of different investments where most people would have pulled the plug. It took that. It took Robin to show me what it looks like when programs are looking you dead in the eye saying, you've been out of school too long. These classes aren't even going to qualify. I could go down the list, but there's no excuses in 2019. If you go in with excuses, you are setting yourself up for some pretty poor surprises. And really, they're not surprises at all. I can predict them. Casey can predict them. But you have to go in saying, I, I'm in the situation I'm in because of certain choices that were made, because of certain circumstances that happened. But right now, in my current predicament, what can I control? Casey, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, I mean, on top of all that, it's, you have these excuses, whether they're real or not. But at the same time, nobody really cares. As bad as that might sound, we're not here to sugarcoat anything. That's, that's not we're try- what we're trying to do. We have 3.6 thousand people in this group all trying to do what you're trying to do. They have their own, quote unquote, excuses. They have their own things to get by. If you got something to complain about, you know, honestly, they don't care. If you're complaining to somebody else, they don't care either because they have their own struggles. You can come to us because we get it. This is what we're here for. But 99% of the other people, it's just falling on dead ears. You're just Mm -hmm. wasting your time talking about your excuses when that energy could have been put to overcoming those excuses. So what are you really doing? What are you really doing here? Hmm. Your excuses are really, they might be valid. However, <laughs> everybody has their own, so nobody's going to feel sorry for you. Nobody's crying for you because they have their own things to cry about. Nobody's mm-hmm. shedding a tear for you because they have their own things to shed their tears about. Mercy. You might have a low GPA. <laughs> Somebody else is complaining about their low GRE. Somebody else is complaining about them having a family to take care of. Somebody's complaining about they failed and withdrew five classes. So Hmm. it doesn't really matter. You have to get over it because everybody else is doing that same thing. And whether you do or not, somebody else can take your spot because they overcame that and you didn't. Or you can take somebody else's spot because you overcame that Hmm. and they didn't. So Hmm. your excuses, does anybody really care except, you know, 1% of the people like us trying to help you get over them? Probably not. So you have to get over those excuses in order to do what you have to do to get into PT school. That's something nobody's really talking about. It's something not easy to talk about. It's something nobody really wants to hear, but it's something that you need to hear in in order to get over those humps in in order to get into PT school. So I just got, I had to say that to get it out there, but you got to think about that. Is anybody really invested into your excuses or into your tears that you're talking about? Hmm. Or are they in, or are they falling into dead ears? So, Make sure they matter. Make sure they matter or you're going to somebody who really can do something about them. 
like possibly us, that can get you over that hump to get into PT school. So with that first one in our list of five, just take that into consideration. Are they valid? Possibly. What can you do about them? And who can you go to to get over those humps? So that's pretty much it. You got it. Mohammed said it's me against me, 100%. Mm. If you're listening right now and you're saying, all right, I get it. Point one taken. I want you to comment no excuses in 2019. Comment no excuses in 2019. If you're going in, y'all, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it's a terrifying thing to say because I like excuses. Excuses are comfortable. Excuses give me something to back up with. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if something goes wrong, it's like, ah, oh, Casey, bruh, like, see my situation this semester. I got sick three times this semester. So that's why I didn't do well. Excuses are nice. They give us a nice cushion, but they are not what's going to get you across the finish line. If I keep making excuses, pre-PT grind doesn't exist. If Casey keeps making excuses, same result. If we both make excuses, we don't stay as physical therapists that are pleased or happy with our careers at this point. No excuses. So if that's you, write it down. No excuses in 2019. Claim it for yourself. It's not for me. It's for you. It's not for Casey. It's for you. No excuses in 2019. Number two, Casey, I'm going to let you drop some fire on this one, bro. Number two is find a community to keep you grounded. Bro, talk to us about this, man, because I, I th- think a lot of time it's pre pts bro. Like, even when we're around other people that believe and understand, you know, what we're trying to do, sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're straight up alone. Like, we, we don't know how to find the right people and the right voices, which ends up becoming a negative in our story. So, so talk to us about this a little bit, bro. Like, no, number two, finding a community to keep you grounded. Yeah, I think finding a community is not only good for the people around you and, and the voices coming in externally, but I talked about this before and we saw this from our surveys. A lot of pressure that you're feeling is from yourself and the voices in your own head. So you mm-hmm. might need a community, an external force to talk to you to get that most pressure out from you from your own head. So it might not even be a community for, oh, I got somebody talking bad about me over here, some advisor telling me I can't do it, somebody yeah. this and that, my family this. My, it might just be you. It might just Mercy. be you putting yourself down day in and day out saying I can't do it. They said this, now I'm internalizing it. You might need a community for that to get mm-hmm. your own thoughts of your, out of your head, to bounce some thoughts off of other people, to see other people winning, to see other people's struggles and to see how they got out of it, to have somebody talk some life into you, to have somebody pull that negative energy out of you. That's what you may need a community for. Because a lot of times in this journey, and, and, it, and it happens with everything, it's really us tearing, yeah. us, tearing our own selves down, saying we can't do it. Because that advisor, you're talking to them for 15, 30 minutes, boom, then you're gone. Then the mm. rest of those 23 and a half hours, it's mm. you. It's you beating yourself up, knocking your head against this wall, mm. saying what you can't do. After, so, after you see somebody else get accepted, you see that on Facebook, Instagram for 30 seconds, 10 seconds. Then they go on with their life. Yeah. Then you're, for the 24 other hours, 23 yeah. whatever hours, you're beating yeah. yourself up saying, why is that not me? Hmm. Why did I not get in? Where's my letter? Where's my interview thing? What could I, Talk about what could I have done better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you might need a community whether you find your own or whether it's us in our different programs Mm -hmm. to talk you out of that, to give some life into you, to see success stories, to see what you can do better, to see Mm. what needs to be changed, to talk, to talk truth to you, to be there Mm. day in and day out multiple times, not just hit, you know, give you some information and go. So that might be the situation for you. Other times for other people, it might be those external factors. People saying that you can't do it constantly. Um, your, Your family, your friends, your, People saying you should change to different things, whether it's in your best interests or not. But I think for a lot of you, including myself, it's, it's your own voice. So that's probably one of the biggest things that you might need a community for, yep. and it'll help you so much. The community me and Joseph uh, are still a part of that gotten us to that point yes. has catapulted us to this level. Because if we didn't yep. have it, we probably would have been done in the first two weeks, True. You know, two months, three months. But True. now that we have something behind us, yeah. We have something to fall back on. We have people to fall back on, yep. uh, coaches and mentors to bounce ideas off of. You, we have a, a support system to make us feel comfortable, to make us feel comfortable 
with moving forward and we're not going to fall flat on our face. There's people behind us there to catch us and push us forward. So exactly. that might be, or pretty much that is what you need. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah man, like uh, the way I see it is this, and I've understood this more as a physical therapist as well. We all at some point when we're struggling feel like we're the only one, regardless of what Casey says, regardless of what Joseph says, regardless of what Greg Todd said. Like, at, like in, our, in our situation, we feel like we're the only one. We know other people are struggling with low GPAs. We know other people have struggled with the GRE. But in that moment, it's like, yo, nobody can really understand my situation. I'll tell you a story. So as, as a PT, I have a clinic here in, in, in Hyde Park, Tampa, Florida. I'm a clinic director at it. Um, and uh, for renewal rehab, let's get it. But um, I, I see a lot of athletes and different other patients. And, and now I especially with my, with my athletes. So let's say hypothetically with like an ACL patient. I've done this many times. You'll have a patient come in. It's their first two visits. They've had their ACL surgery, reconstruction surgery. They're down. Like I'm talking like this is a high level athlete competing at a college level. Sometimes, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter, but, but they're a high and very competitive athlete being brought down to where they're like, yo, I'm in my bed all the time. Joseph's all I'm doing is these like stupid ankle pumps. All I'm doing is like pushing my dog on knee into some random stupid towel under my knee. Like I'm in this brace. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. And as you're progressing them, what I do is I don't, I don't spend a lot of time at first being like, I mean, don't know me wrong. Like I'll, I'll listen. I'll be very intentional about listening, being very present with them. But the one trick that I always pull out of my little back pocket is I find other patients that have gone through the same surgery because I see a lot of like similar like surgeries and things like that. So I'm like, all right, cool. Oh, Susie, Susie K has had her. So in my head, I'm like, Susie K had her ACL surgery seven weeks ago. Check out what she's doing. So I'm like, Hey, um, Susie, come here real quick. I'm like, and I have them introduce each other because of HIPAA rules. And I'm like, Hey, um, can y'all talk real quick? And I just walk away. I just let it happen. And the reason why I don't even have to cue Susie Q on what to do, it's because I did the same thing with her when she was in that same situation. And I come back five minutes later, and that new patient is locked in. They're like, whatever the hell I got to do to be like her, to go through this, I'm in for. But also what this new person, this new patient realized was that she was not the only one going through it. Susie Q had the same problems. Susie Q had the same frustrations. Actually, Susie Q had a more intense surgery. So what she was going through was a little bit worse than what I'm going through. And what you start realizing is just by being able to empathize with people that are going through your situation, you suddenly have a little more swagger to you. You suddenly have a little more confidence to you. Don't let that hold you back. You suddenly realize, yo, I just got to trust this process. Like, la like last night's live stream with Ben was simply for that. For anybody with a low GPA to be like, oh, 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 so my man did it, 2.4. Dang, I got 2.9. His situation was a little worse than mine. And he got into PT? Okay. So now when I go and retake my classes, I'm not going to go in thinking, oh, it's probably not going to work out. Let me just do a little bit. Let me just get a B. Let me just get a C plus. Let me just get a B minus. Let me just do the bare minimum. Like you go in saying, okay, if Ben freaking did it, I'm going to do what I got to do to lock myself in with an A. Not an A minus, an A. Like a solid A. I'm going to do what I got to do. What did Ben do? And you start, like, you start following step by step what they did. Because if, if what Casey and I are saying ain't like, like, is it resonating? It's sure going to resonate when it's somebody that's been exactly where you're at within the last six months. So finding a community is vital to you succeeding as a pre -PT. Have students done it without it? Well, yeah. Is it as easy? No. But you're setting yourself up not only to get into PT school, that's the same community that you reach out to and communicate with after you're done with the application process, while you're in PT school, after you're done with PT school. You're walking step by step with people that are in different parts of the country. And the community that Casey and I like, you know, opted into when we were PT students, that's the same community that's, that we've opted into as physical therapists. That's the same, like, that's the same community that's pushing us as business owners, that like clinic directors, all these different things. It's the same community. You're growing together because you're going through the same struggle, the same frustrations. And just like those two patients I just told you about, you have to put yourself in that situation. 
Otherwise, you're playing a game where it's just, well, I don't think I can. Let me just kind of go at this half-heartedly. Let me try this. Let me try that. You're playing a game that really goes into our third point. But before we go into our third point, I need y'all to, like, re- like if, if you're like, all right, Joseph, all right, Casey, I get it. I want you to comment saying, I need my accepted community in 2019. If you realize, yo, I got to have people around me. I got to have people that are on track with this journey. Right now, I'm not here to talk about, you know, uh, you know, how to, you know, you know, raise a baby. I'm not here to talk about how to become a better basketball player. We're, we're here talking about getting into PT school. And so specifically for this journey, saying that I, I need my accepted community, my accepted network in 2019. If that is you, I want you to just say it below. I want you to comment it below. Because that is you saying to yourself, okay, I got to start looking for people. I got to start, let's go Shanahan. I got to start finding people, whether it's in this community, in the pre-doctor physical therapy students page, whether it's with pre-PT grind, whether it's people that are local, because sometimes you have people that are local where you currently live that you can connect with, people in your state. I mean, you can, you can easily like look in here and see like who's from, like, see, I'm from Tampa. So I can easily find pre-PTs that are in Tampa, you know, I mean, yo, shoot. We might as well Tampa free PTs. We might have to do a meetup in 2019. Let's just throwing that out there. But but honestly, it's understanding that. Let's go, Muhammad. Let's go, Kaylee. But under if you understand that and carry that into 2019, then you are setting yourself up in the same way that those two patients are. Setting yourself up to not get in your own way as a pre PT. And that goes into our third topic. Our third point for tonight. The first one was no excuses. No excuses, so stop creating them. Number two was find a community to keep you grounded. And number three, number three is guessing as a pre-PT leads to disappointment. Guessing as a pre-PT leads to disappointment. And insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So if you're guessing once, and then you guess twice. If you're doing two application cycles back to back, if you're taking your GRE two times and you're just guessing, you're like, let me try this. Let me try that. I saw this on Google. I saw this on YouTube. Let me try it. If you're just guessing, then you're setting yourself up for disappointment. There, there was a live stream that we did recently with, um, with Ariana. She was talking about her experience with, with applying multiple different cycles. And she was doing a lot of really good things. If you listen to her story, go back and listen to the live stream. Um, it'll be a podcast episode soon as well. But go back and listen to the live stream. And she talks about how she applied for two different cycles before finally applying for her third cycle and getting accepted into PT school. And as she was doing that, she, she was breaking out to you what she was doing the first cycle. First cycle, she didn't really know what she was doing. Second cycle, she, she was doing a few more things. St- th- things that she had seen and had known, okay, this is working for that student. This is working for that student. I saw this on Google when I was looking up how to get into PT school. I was seeing, she was still guessing though. 2018 was the first time she was like, yo, I know exactly what I need to do step by step. She stopped guessing. And even though she had been rejected two different cycles as a pre-PT, if, if, you, didn't, if you didn't see the live stream, it's one worth seeing. So scroll down. Go into the little search bar and type in like Joseph or Ariana or whatever, and you'll find us. And really, I want you to go watch her story because that is the perfect example of what it means to literally stop guessing and say, all right, I got to do what I need to do as a pre-physical therapy student to lock myself in on this goal that I have claimed is mine. Remember, we said no excuses in 2019. We already said we need an accepted community, an acceptance community, a network of, of students, pre-PTs. Coaches, non-traditional coaches that can walk us through this process. But honestly, it comes with also accepting that we got to stop guessing. 2018 had a lot of guesswork, Case. 2018 had a lot of guesswork. We were seeing it in our messages that were coming through to pre-PT grind. We were seeing it in the pre-doctor physical therapy students page, left and right. Hey, guys, what works for you with this? 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 That is so common. And what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to just say, hey, this kind of works for that person. This kind of works for that person. They're kind of different directions. Let let me just try one of them. Like you want to be able to understand for your specific situation, what do I need to do? Casey, what are your thoughts on that topic? 
Yeah, I mean, so many people are guessing that everybody starts guessing the same way, then nobody starts to stand out. Everybody is common. Everybody is just like everyone else. Everybody who sees that same YouTube video with 30,000 views that came out three years ago, and you guys are all guessing watching the same video, you're all the same. Everybody who goes mm. to that blog post that has a bunch of views that came out two years ago, and you guys are all just searching, typing into Google, just guessing, you guys are all in that same pile. You guys who go listen to the same and the same thing, you guys think you're doing something different. You're standing mm. out just because you found a nice little YouTube video. You found a nice little blog post, you know, some basic things. It's, it's not really different. You guys are still guessing all the same way. Then you come and ask, oh, how do I stand out? How do I do this? How do I do this? I tried this. I tried that. When in reality, 5,000 other people did it. 10,000 <laughs> other people did it. 20,000 yeah, yeah, other yeah. people did the same thing and you all are guessing or Mercy. insanely applying to PT school the same way. And you think you're doing something different. You think you're standing out, but in reality, hmm. the same people who are your competition have been trying the same things as you did. So that's just, that's just one aspect of it. Then the next is, we've said this before, uh, we talked about insanely applying, doing the same things over and over, um, success leads clues, uh, learning from other experiences are the best way so you don't have to go through them yourself. But until you have put yourself in what you guys just typed in, I need my accepted community, it doesn't really hit home because you haven't really talked to and interacted with those people who have done it. You just heard about this and, and heard about that and saw what somebody else tried and, and read something on Student Doctor Network or that forum or this and that or even in our community. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, and it's no real big difference because one big thing is that you are not held accountable for it by the people in your accepted community that you said wow. you needed to be into. So huh. everybody is just talking, bouncing ideas back and forth. Then you go and watch NFL playoffs or the NBA or wow. you watch your makeup videos because yeah. you see something nice. Oh, I'll try that next week. Boom. Mercy. And, and, and three weeks go by and you're still in the same place. Oh, I'll Mercy. try that tomorrow. Then something comes up and nobody's holding you accountable, whether it's us, whether it's your own group, whether it's the people in our community who have done it before, this and that. So you end up in that same cycle. And that, oh, same wow. washing and that same washing machine, rinse and repeat that same thing. And you're like, man, I've tried for this time. I tried for that time. I tried for this cycle and that. And I'm getting a little bit better. I learned a few little tricks, but what? I don't, what is it? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But until that change happens, you're just guessing. Exactly. You're guessing like everybody else. So that, that's pretty much it for me. Are you guessing or are, are you going to be held accountable um, for what you find and for your actions, uh, for your actions to get into PT school. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. What you going to do? Simple as that. Guesswork Oops. leads to disappointment. How are you good, bro? Like guesswork leads to disappointment. And going into 2019, that has to be a focus as a pre-PT. There's really no other way. Like we were saying, like, well, like what Casey was saying, there, there's a lot of things that really were done five years ago as pre-PTs to apply and get into PT school. But really, that game has changed completely. Getting into PT school the way we did it five years ago, seven years ago, that's changed completely. That's what everybody's doing now. The things that stood you out before, that's what everybody's doing now. So we got to stop guessing. If you're guessing, you're guessing in a crowd. And a crowd that's guessing is just chaos, right? So, so mm. going into 2019, I want you to comment saying, I, I'm not trying to guess anymore. I don't want to guess anymore. Comment that. I don't want to guess anymore. I don't care if you are waiting for your uh, to hear back from the school right now. I don't care if you're waiting for your interview. I don't care if you haven't even applied yet. I don't want to guess anymore. Just, just say that for yourself. Because what that will do is it's an accountability for yourself. To just tell yourself, yo, going into this next year, I've already talked about excuses i've already talked about community but going in i gotta know as a pre-pt that i'm not going to just try whatever i see i'm not just going to look up random things you know on google and just say all right let me see if that works i'm not just going to say hey like let me see uh, no, no no we can't guess anymore so if you want to hold yourself accountable as a pre-pt say i don't want to guess anymore in 2019 which leads us to number four number four have 3d vision Hmm. Half 3D vision. Casey, I want you to drop some fire on this one. Half 3D vision. Learn to see things from all sides. Casey, what does that even mean? 
There's so many ways I can I can possibly go with this, but um, 3D vision, the first thing that comes to mind is looking from a bird's eye view or going to the top of, you know, the highest building and, and getting that vision of what's really going on. What's the plan? Yes, what's your what's your map? What's your what's your roadmap? What's your yeah. plan to get where you need to be? Can you see everything or can you just see uh, the stoplight uh, right in front of you or the stop sign right in, in, in front of you? And another thing that comes to mind is uh, really on a foggy day, if you're from, you know, Midwest, North, Northwest, and you can really just see enough to not crash. You can yep. just see enough to make sure you have to stop in time. That's what really comes to mind. Yep. Are you, what place are you in? Or do you have somebody to help you see that 3D vision? Or mm -hmm. are you, are you stuck on the first level? Or is it constantly a foggy day for you as a pre-PT? Because if you can't see it, you're just inching along. If you can't see it, you're, you're running into whatever's in front of you and you're not progressing and you can't even see that future. You can't even see you getting into PT school anymore. You can't even see you getting over 300 on that GRE or getting a solid A, not a B plus, not an A minus in that physics class you've been struggling with because you don't have that 3D vision. You don't have somebody to show you that 3D vision and you wow. keep just hitting the same roadblocks time and time again. So sure. if you can't see it, you might have to up your game a little bit, have somebody mm -hmm. show you the staircase or the elevator or have somebody show yeah. it to you so yes, you sir. can absolutely see where you're going. You can absolutely see yourself in that seat on the first day of PT school. You can see yeah. yourself changing your status on your Instagram profile yeah. to SPT instead of pre-PT. You can see yourself mm -hmm. on graduation day in 20 whatever, 2020 yes, whatever, in your graduation gown, in your hood, in your cap, dancing at your party, you have to be able to see that. And if you can't see it right now, then hmm. you need to make a change. Whatever that change is for you, we have plenty of things for that. But whatever that change is for you, you have to be able to see it in order to get there. So that's what, that's really what comes to mind for me I love uh, with it. 3D I love Vision. It. Yeah, man. And, and really another step for that, like for 3D Vision, another way to also look at it is – you have to understand all, all the different sides in this game. As a pre PT, you have to understand all the different sides. You have to have the 3D vision for yourself and where you're going, like Casey just said, but you also have to understand everything about this game. Like, you can't really, like, listen, like, if I'm playing in a sports game, for all my basketball fans, if you're a soccer fan, football fan, you'll understand this. If I'm going into a game, and I don't understand what the role of the referee is. I don't understand what the role of the fans are. I don't understand what, what the role of my coach is. All I know is, yo, I'm out here to just play. I'm out here to just play. I don't need no, no, uh, some guy on the sideline says, says he's a coach. He's yelling at us. I don't know what. Some referee just keep blowing whistles. Like, if you don't know what everybody else's role is, and if you don't know what everybody else is seeing, then it won't help you understand how to play wisely. If you watch sports, you'll see players know when to fight with refs and when not to. They know when a ref has seen a real foul from, like, a foul, and they're like, yo, I don't really agree with this. And then you got, like, you know, people just whine all the time. But that doesn't matter. Boy, point is that as, as a pre-PT, you have to see everything in 3D. There can't be any surprises. In terms of what the program's going to see, 3D. In terms of your current situation, 3D. We can't be getting – to the end of the application process saying, yo, I didn't know. I didn't know, Casey. I applied. I didn't know that I didn't meet all the requirements. I applied. I didn't know that I was supposed to, you know, keep a communication and build a relationship. I didn't know how to leverage my campus visits. I didn't know. There has to be, you have to have three-dimensional vision as a pre-PT. If this was seven years ago, you could get away with not having it. But this is about to be 2019. And in 2019, the way to win as a pre-PT is to have 3D vision. You have to have it. There's lots of places to get it. If you're playing Monopoly and you don't know the rules, you can't win, and all you'll do is keep passing and go. You got it, exactly. Mm. So 3D vision as a pre-PT has to be a priority. It has to be a priority. And if you're still like, yo, I don't, I don't really know what y'all say, send us a message. At contact preptgrind.com. Send us a message. Let's talk tonight. <laughs> Let's start breaking this down for you tonight. Because as we go into 2019, like, like, like we said before, there really can't be any excuses. There can't be any, like, you have to have a strong community around you. You can't be guessing 
but really, you have to have your 3D goggles. So I want y'all to comment, give me my 3D goggles in 2019. Give me my 3D goggles in 2019. Obviously, we have tools to help you do that. But as you go into 2019, I just want you to do this for you. Casey and I want you to do this for you. Just say, give me my goggles, my 3D goggles in 2019. I don't want to see the movie in 2D. I don't want to see just what everybody else is seeing. Notice, when you go to a movie theater, everybody else sees it in 2D. Only the people that pay a little extra go into the IMAX and see it in 3D. You pay a little extra for the goggles. You invest a little more for the goggles. But your, like, your experience is that much more, like, is just that much more exciting. Your, your experience is that much more invigorating. Your, your, the way you talk about the movie afterwards is not the same. It's like, yo, I went and I saw, I saw Black Panther in 3D, bro. Yo. When I tell you that to tell, I mean, come on. Like, the way you talk about it is different. The way you talk about your experience as a pre-PT is different. But going into 2019, you have to see everything in 3D. So comment, give me my 3D goggles in 2019. I need my 3D goggles. Because if I don't, then all I'm doing is what everybody else is doing. All I'm doing is paying, you know, for the Tuesday night, you know, $4 movie tickets to see it in 2D like everybody else. And if I'm playing everybody else's game, there's no way I got a shot at setting myself apart as a pre-PT. We're not taking it easy tonight, as you can tell. But 2019 is a big year for you, if you want it to be. But we got to get those 3D goggles on. The last point tonight, Casey, is recognize your false beliefs for what they are false recognize your false beliefs for what they are false the reason why we've been and we're going to keep doing this because there's a lot of false beliefs we got to keep breaking for you in 2019 but the reason why we've been bringing in pre-pts that have been through different struggles the different obstacles that have obviously been in the accepted system like, the reason why we've been bringing them in is because they all resemble a lot of the false beliefs that you currently have. False beliefs about your current situation as a pre-PT. False beliefs about your chances of getting in. False beliefs about, you know, what programs are going to think. False beliefs about you not being able to get in with a low GPA. You not being able to pass the GRE. So, so, so because I can't pass the GRE, I don't have a shot. False beliefs about the fact that you might not even make a good PT because you can't pass classes. All of those are false beliefs. But going into 2019, we're, this is one that we're going to keep reinforcing for you. But going into 2019, we want to show you and break down every single one of your false beliefs as a pre-PT. So that you can recognize them for what they are. Absolutely false. Absolutely false. And once we do that, then it doesn't really matter anymore. Every little thing. Remember those excuses we were talking about in number one, Casey? Shoot. Those aren't even a thing anymore. Mm. Now the way we go into this. Remember, like Ben's live stream last night, he, he, he was saying, he was like, yo, Joseph, and I thought it was a great analogy. He was talking about going in and taking on the mama mentality, which some of you might not understand. It's a basketball term for, you know, referencing Kobe Bryant. But he said, as a pre-PT, the term he used, he said, I had to start playing angry. I had to start playing angry. Pretty much what he meant is that he just said, yo, screw it. I can't really play this safe anymore. I can't play this with backup plans anymore. I can't play this as if, like, uh, well, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to do this. If it, if it works out, I'm, no, 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 no. He's like, I'm not playing that game anymore. He said, like, I want PT too bad, and nobody's going to stop me. So he started playing angry. He went all in. He doubled down. He doubled down. He put everything on it. And that's what led to the actions that he took. But it also took him realizing that the false beliefs that he had about his low GPA had to crash immediately. He used all the four points that, I, uh, that we just addressed, the first four points we talked about. He used all those four to finally break his false beliefs. But he had to recognize them for what they were. False beliefs. Casey, what are your thoughts on that, man? Because we have... Like, you had quite a few false beliefs, too, man. Like, you not getting accepted after your, your, your first try, you know, you know, applying to PT school. You had a lot of doubts and false beliefs that were building up. Like, 
talk to us about that process and just what it takes to start breaking those down and just recognizing them for what they really are. Yeah, I'm going to have to take that from Ben Kim. I never really thought of it like that, but it, it's true when he said applying angry or having that mama mentality because when I didn't get in the first time, yeah, I was so frustrated and upset that I guess I can look at it that way, that I was just so determined to not let it happen again that I did take that approach. Like, nothing is going to stop me from getting in. Like, I don't care what it is. So I pretty much took on that kind of mentality, and, and it worked. So I'm going to have to coin that from get, uh, from Ben Kim, give him all the Blame. credit for it. But, man, <laughs> like, you know when you watch those movies, then, you know, the, the, the fire comes around the cartoon character, and they're, they're in beast mode, and they're ready to go. Pretty, pretty much the same thing, and you guys got to have that. But when you think about – let's change it a little bit. When you think of uh, players like Steph Curry, why do people like him so much as opposed to uh, LeBron James, Shaq, KD, because he's breaking down false beliefs? Oh, a regular guy is now one of the most uh, popular guys in the NBA. He's going to yeah, go in the yeah, Hall yeah. of Fame, going to be yeah. a legend. Yeah, because he's just kind of like me. He's not yep. super tall. He shoots the ball. His handles are cool. I can yep. kind of do the same thing in the gym. I don't have to dunk it. I don't have to be 6'8", 260. I don't have to be 7'1", 7'2", Mercy. 300 pounds. <laughs> Steph Curry is breaking your false beliefs. Yep. For us as PT students and now physical therapists, we had the same thing uh, with Smart Success PT and Greg Todd. Oh, I see Somebody's killing it. Somebody has a family, multimillionaire, killing it. Yeah, he had his struggles, but he overcame them, blah, blah, blah. I can, he's chilling. He's a regular dude. I can, I can do the same thing all the way I'll to you guys. That, yeah. Right. All the way down to where you guys are at now. And I shouldn't say down, but where you guys are at now in your journey. You guys are seeing it now. And that's breaking your false beliefs, just like Steph Curry's doing, just like Greg Todd and and Paul Goff and all these people are doing Kyle Rice for, for us. These pre-PTs who have gotten with a low GPA, 2.4, um, 2.9 with a car accident, applying multiple times, uh, even myself, you guys have what we talked about earlier. Number one, no more excuses because now your false beliefs are broken because you saw somebody else do it already. Mm. So everything ties into what we've just been talking about down to this number five. And that's pretty, much, that's pretty much it. You have no excuses because your false beliefs are now broken because Ben Kim, Darnett, Ariana, uh, so many other people, uh, Robin, people who are coming in, uh, Chelsea. We got so many other people who have done it already and coming in to tell their story who have done it. And now you have no excuses in order to do the same thing. If you need more help, if you need a community, if you want to be in a higher status as a pre PT yeah. and want to be around those winners, if you want to have the swag, if you want to stand out and go to your campus visits with that pre PT grind, community and swag and confidence behind you, we can upgrade your status as a pre PT to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's what you want to do, just talk to us about it and we'll get you there. But now that's it. False beliefs are broken. And now you have number one, no excuses to get into PT school. So that's what you got to think about with false beliefs. It's been broken on the NBA, NFL level, all the way to where you are now. As a yes, pre sir. Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. So going into 2019, let me just say all five one more time for those of you that just joined us. What's up, Robin? What's up, Justin? One, no excuses. No excuses. Stop creating them. Number two, find a community to keep you grounded. Number three, guessing as a pre-PT leads to disappointment. And insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Number four, have 3D vision. Give me my 3D glasses in 2019 is what y'all were saying. And then number five, recognize your false beliefs for what they really are false. 2019 is going to be an amazing year if you allow it to be. If it happens to you, then who knows? But if you happen to it, if you have absolute control over what happens in 2019, then you can make that a reality just like many of the other winners that have come before you have done, just like we did. That's how we got to this point anyway. But we want to give that to you tenfold in 2019. So if you're ready to ride on the train with us, you just let us know. Send us a message at contactpreptground.com. But in January, we're going in. February, we're going in. We even have a huge training coming out at the end of January that, that you'll be hearing about really, really soon. But we have a lot, a lot coming your way. But before you absorb what we're doing, before you absorb what we're, like, throwing your way, I want you to come back to this live stream and look at those five things. 
and say, am I meeting all five? Am I ready to embrace all five? If I am, then it's game over. 2019 can't touch me. But if I, if I want to compromise, if I want to do maybe three of the five, two of the five, one of the five, maybe I'll just do it my own. Okay, well, do it. You might be disappointed, though. But as we go into 2019, let's freaking destroy it. Make this your year of domination. I'm not saying this to excite you or get you pumped. I mean, it might make you pump, whatever. Like, oh, really, this is just like being real with you and saying, what am I willing to do to make this my year if I really want it? If I don't know if I want it or not, okay, but then I got to figure that out first. But if I know that this is what I want, then let's lock in, let's strap down, let's figure this out and absolutely destroy it in 2019. And that's what Casey and I and our team are committed to doing for you. So as we wrap up the year with this being our last pre-PT Chat Live of 2018, we want to thank you so much for being on this journey with us. We want to thank you so much for taking a chance on yourself and say, yo, I got to figure this game out and I got to find the right community to do it. You have found this. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. But as we go into this next year, let's go all in. Let's go guns blazing. Let's absolutely destroy it. I can't wait to see where each and every one of you gets to this coming year. Send us a message at contact www.contactpreptgrind.com on your phone, your computer, whatever. Even if you have an Android, we'll forgive you. But 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 send us a message at contactpreptgrind.com. Let's start a conversation now. Let's talk about where you are right now. Let's talk about how to get you to the other side in 2019. But let's do it without any excuses, with the right community, without any guesswork, with, like without having any backup plans, having 3D vision and making sure 100% that our false beliefs become just that, false beliefs. Have a great night. Many blessings. Have a great rest of your 2018. Let's freaking get in this next year. Bye.